Cruiser Research introduced the Core 1 this year as part of Formnex. This is an enclosed Corex white printer with special features, and in my opinion, a very unique design. And what special features this printer has and what sets it apart from the competition, I will discuss now in the interview with Marcel. Enjoy. 2001. Yes, Marcel, the last time we saw each other was at the Maker FA in Hanover. It was a while ago. Now we are here at Formnex. Not much has happened. It hasn't been that long. No, it has been three months. That went by quickly. You were busy during that time. You released something new, not just in the meantime. Okay, tell us more about this printer that is behind us. This is the core one. It was officially presented yesterday at one o'clock. You were allowed to see it a little earlier. Yes, yes. I also ordered it right away. Now to all the people who are asking, okay, what is the difference to the MK or the XL? Where does it fit exactly? Does it fit right in the middle or? So it fills the gap a bit between the MK and the XL. There was perhaps something missing in between. And we often heard feedback that, especially in the business sector, customers would like to just take the device out of the box and start printing right away. There was occasionally a bit of difficulty that the enclosure could not be shipped fully assembled, and therefore even if people ordered a fully assembled MKS, they still had to set up the enclosure, especially in the business sector. They said, okay, there are better solutions, and we had to silently accept that, mm. knowing that we are working on solutions, and exactly that gap we have now closed, it is now somewhere in between. We have taken over a lot of parts from the MKS. It has the same print bed. So the same print area, the same print plates are included, but now fully enclosed. You can take it out of the box and start printing immediately, and it has a printer that is also simply and quickly capable of printing technical materials well. I believe that is the key point, especially in business. Now something like PA or something in the direction of printing. We offer PH, PA, PH. I was just about to say PC blend. Your PC blend, which is always sold out. That's difficult. I was in Prague last week and visited the factory and then heard a bit more about it. Yes, if we print more parts from PC blend, we also need more of it ourselves. It is also a nice material, one can simply say. Now the question is, it is not in terms of build volume like an MK, but what surprised me is that you can use the same components such as print bed, nozzle, Hot end. Exactly, we tried to aim this bit at colors. With this printer, when we compare it to an enclosure, it has 50% less footprint. Volume that the printer occupies, and compared to a normal Mankaf, the footprint has decreased by 30% because it no longer needs to move all the way forward and backward. Basically, farm operators should still have the ability to use all their print plates and all their spare parts, nozzles, and continue to use them. And that's why uh, at some point the idea was born that, okay, if we do something in between, we don't need a different print bed size, but continue with the print bed size that has proven to be very effective. And we have still been able to increase the build volume by about 30% because we could squeeze a bit more in Y and 5 cm more in Z. And for those who know the rocket model, when you have it in your hand, you can feel the difference. 5 cm is in Z. Okay. Yeah, cool. Yes, you explained to me yesterday about the MK bed. For those who don't know, there is this outline drawn for the printing area that the MK can print, in that sense. And now you can print over this edge again. That's how you phrased it. Exactly right. We can now fully explore the entire printing area. I don't know anyone who, if they have a printer or whatever size, actually prints all the way to the last edge. You don't do that in X, Y, or Z. And because we have now increased the volume, we can really actively print larger parts without always having to go all the way to the edge. Okay, another point is the speed. Okay. You showed again in the presentation yesterday that it has also become significantly faster compared to the KS, which has already improved with the cat nozzle. And also the cooling. How much percent faster it has become, or approximately the MK to the MK is... No, the MKS to the core one. So on average, there is about 15 to 20% more speed from the MKs to the core one. It depends heavily on the component. So there are components where we are only 10% faster, but there are also components where we say, okay, we are 30% faster. 
it is very geometry dependent, but on average we are about 20% faster than before. This is fundamentally due to the fact that printer is now simply much more massive. I mean, you have probably tried to lift it up. Yes. It looks very light. It is surprisingly heavy because it has a complete steel construction, so it is a complete steel housing. And because it is really very stiff, you can print 20% faster at the same quality. It is also super stable. Not only Joseph found that out yesterday, but also the other YouTubers who were here. They really hit the thing hard. 2001. At times, the gap here at the top between the lid and the plexiglass pane was indeed that large. Times. I watched it again yesterday in slow motion. It was really intense. And the thing is still printing. What I noticed is, finally, thank you. You placed the filament spool to the side or made it so that when you have the printers, as shown, it makes sense to place them next to each other piece by piece where there is no gap anymore or where you can't fit a filament spool through anymore. Also somewhere up here, the whole thing. Exactly. There is a solution to place the spool on top because, as Joseph said, placing it at the back is less user-friendly. So it should be accessible from the front. A main point of the XL was easy reach and full accessibility. Yes, yes. But that is also... There are little things that I noticed also in the presentation, for example, that you can completely mount the door in reverse or something along those lines. These are little things that might not be so easily possible with a, I'll just say K, where I say, okay, that's already pretty cool. I think you can also completely remove the door if you want. You can take it off entirely, which is a point in the farming area, in farming operations, where you say, okay, maybe you don't even need a door because you're printing PLA parts in bulk or something like that, right? But basically, yes, where PLA was already, yes, we are currently printing PLA. And PLA is the material that causes the most noise, let's say, because we need the most cooling and want to keep the build frame as cool as possible. And this is basically the loudest the printer can run. And I think you can perceive it in some way. Yes. So for everyone who can't perceive this through the microphone or the camera, compared to an XC or a KC, this is really a relief. I would definitely put this thing in my office. Instead of a KC, I definitely wouldn't put that in my office because those things are all much louder. But you also have a few features up here, like a slider, so that you can basically install ventilation. No, it's not that you can install ventilation. There is ventilation built in at the back. So we have active regulation of the build chamber temperature. However, there are environments that are just extremely warm. Let's say you place 600 printers in a room and it's 45 degrees, then you can definitely notice that the ventilation can't work miracles anymore. That's why there is the option to open the grid at the top with a slider. Really ensure that the printer can print PLA and PTG in any environment, even with the door closed. Okay, that was also a point yesterday. Mm. We were first puzzling over what kind of material that is. And the engineer then said that the lead designer of the printer mentioned, that is PLA. We initially thought, yes, that is ASA because the printer is so quiet. And then we were like, no, that looks like the Pulsar Orange PETG. But then it came out, no, it's PLA. We're really surprised, especially with the door closed. No clogging issues, nothing at all. I mean, I have experienced a lot of bad things with other printers. Have to say, okay, that's pretty cool. It indicates that the ventilation works well in there. However, what I noticed yesterday is that here on the side, where the spool is located, you have it not only on one side, but also here on the other side. And that has a few different reasons. Exactly. It's a bit of form follows function. We wanted to ensure that the printer has as small a footprint as possible, so that the spools don't hang over the sides in any way. We thought about the idea that if we do it on one side, we can do it on the other side for symmetry reasons, but it brings various advantages. On one hand, you can somehow use the hollow space created on the left, for example. You saw it in the presentation, storing print plates, or I think in the future there will be many more things. Yes, there are probably already a few people who are 2001 having good ideas about it. This also has the additional advantage that we can reduce the entire volume inside the printer itself. So there is simply less air in it, less air that needs to be heated. This allows us to really quickly bring the print chamber temperature to what we want, up to 55 degrees, and it is heated passively through the print bed. That was a question. Still wanted to ask because it wasn't quite clear. We also had a heated discussion about it in Discord yesterday after your presentation. Is this an active or passive series? Passive through the print bed. So that's enough to easily get the build space to 55 degrees when needed, for example. For PHPC, we talked about maybe ASA, and that way we can really 
basically heat the build space and keep it constant without needing any kind of heater. Okay. Then there are a few things. I also said, okay, cool, because the first thing that came to my mind when I saw the printer was, okay, maybe there will be a multi-tool upgrade later. But then I saw, okay, this thing is compatible with the MMU USAND and also with the Hacker I.O. board and with removable Wi-Fi. So all the features that stood out a bit with the MK. Exactly. So we really value that this is a device that you can safely place in your production. That's why we decided in many places for opt-in instead of opt-out options. For example, the camera that can be retrofitted but doesn't have to be because there are many who have concerns, perhaps also security requirements, that cameras should not be present, that they should not stream to the cloud or similar, and also has the option to customize everything. You can choose what you need, nothing is mandatory. I believe that someone who places 20, 30 or 50 of these in their factory, distributed across their company, does not need a hacker board USAND. And depending on where the printers are or how the printers are positioned or what the network infrastructure is like, you may not need or want a camera. That's why it is an opt-in option. Yes, it's cool. Then there was one more thing, especially when you consider that I have various printers at home. And one thing I've noticed, especially with the newer devices, is maintainability. I always praise the MK, especially because of the documentation you have, which is truly top notch. There are very few who do it even remotely in that direction. This thing helps take everything to a new level, especially in the Corex area. Absolutely. When you look at the device, we saw the exploded view in the presentation and also in the video. Basically, you have two L shapes that interlock and you can easily remove the upper L shape with just a few screws. So that's essentially the top and the front part and you can then access the entire kinematics. And the entire kinematics itself sits on a steel plate that can also be removed. This means you can completely disassemble the part in just a few minutes. And if necessary, any pulley or any part that could potentially fail can be replaced or maintained. Super easy. Yes, exactly. No. Okay. Then there was one more thing. I didn't know. I hadn't noticed it at all. But the door has a sensor. The door has a sensor in it, yes. Does that mean if I open the door now, the printer stops? Or do you have to set that? Can you set that? It's like with the filament runout sensor. You can set it so that when the door opens, it responds accordingly. Business customers, somehow large industries have difficulties with that. What's it called? Risk assessment. Yes. Risk assessment. And it makes it easier for them to set up the devices when they stop moving when the door opens. So that is a way to ensure more safety where it is absolutely required. Yes, I am also thinking about the topic of schools, for example. But then, especially in combination with data security, is also relevant. Because I know from my own experience, we had a 3D printing project before where we had three Fusher MKs in the school. The parents were always very eager, especially when it came to pictures where the child might be visible. This is an important point. So no camera by default, but it can be optionally retrofitted. That's an important point. And of course, if the child opens the door and reaches in, that their paws don't get burned. I think it's cool that such things are considered, really have to say. If you do something like that, then you should do it completely and properly. 2001, okay. Then I was surprised on the back. I first thought, okay, <laughs> did they install two power supplies there? Okay, oh my God, the power consumption will probably kill me, but that's not the case, right? No, that's one power supply. The other looks like a power supply. It's just the new cover for the electronics, which went a bit crazy compared to the MKS. It looks a bit nicer. Power consumption is a bit somewhat lower than with the MK. So when we talk about the close MKS, we have an enclosure that helps maintain the temperature more easily. What does the part cost? Well, if you consider buying a fully assembled MKS for almost $1,200 and the enclosure, which might add another $350, plus the electronics for the LED, then you're already over $1,500. Yes, that would be the price direction that many people expected. But as it stands here, you can get it assembled for $1,349, 349 euros. Delivery date in January if you order now, or is that already? I haven't heard any numbers yet. There were some supply chain problems. We would have liked to get it into stores before Christmas, but we are trying to keep the shipping in January for those who pre-order. It depends on how many pre-order. 
we know that it's like always, no matter where you go, as soon as you're not the first there, it's come first serve. Then you dropped a bombshell and I thought, hmm, okay, I could also imagine that for myself. You can't use your MKs. The MKs you mentioned have too little space from the Z spindles. It's too short. No, 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 no. Right. They are too short, right? They have the 1.8 degree motor. They have the 1.8 degree. There are 0 0.9 degrees kind of installed. Yes. But theoretically, one could buy the three spindles and then also set up an MK3. Yep. So we are now talking about the conversion kit from the MKS to the core one. There is the possibility to convert it. You get a spindle with it. You can continue to use the two spindles from the MKS. Uh, if you have a new three, you are missing the two spindles. You have to get them separately. You need to get the two spindles separately. Otherwise, it has to be the S because of the fan, because it is, again, the 360-degree ventilation 2001 with the high-pressure fan. Many people have complained about the MKS, that the nozzle is not as nicely visible as with the MK, even though it is no longer needed with the loads. But that's how the design decision was made to place the fan at the back so that it can be seen again. So it's about the fan and the motors that are absolutely necessary. And accordingly, the next route ahead is cool. And you also have, as M Book already mentioned in the video, 12 3D printed parts in it. And the rest, as I have already seen here on the sides, the XY joints and such are mostly made of metal. That means you have a lot of parts there that are, let's say, injection molded or made of metal so that the device really comes across as high quality. Mm. You really have to say that. So the idea is not necessarily for it to come across as high quality. It should simply have high quality, meaning it should be really stable. That was the reason. Everything is metal, so that you don't have a mix of metal and aluminum, which could cause problems with different thermal expansion coefficients. And because we have the construction in such a way that we have used a lot of steel parts, we simply need any fewer plastic parts. And all the plastic parts that are used are made of PCCF, which ensures that we consume more PCCF ourselves. To my regret, but okay. Yes, it is a beautiful device. The review will come. I have already pre-ordered one. Thank you very much again. You're welcome. For those who want to take a look at the device, there are a few over at the stands. So if someone sees the video before they go to the form... Or you finish it today... I'm trying today for the Patriots, tomorrow for the other viewers. Okay. And on Friday there is stamping, so I assume that one or another might still come by? Yes. Then I would be happy to welcome you at the booth. We have five pieces to look at. Feel free to check them out, play around a bit. If you have questions, contact me. And otherwise, if you have any questions, I think I will film a few more things, and then I will be done. Thank you very, very much. You're welcome. I wish you much success. Yes, thank you. It was a pleasure. Until next time. Bye. Bye.